This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. The TalkSport Fan Network is proud to be partnering with Lotto from the National Lottery. You know that Lotto's basically the OG millionaire maker, right? You can get involved and play every Wednesday. Crazy. Imagine you won this Wednesday's jackpot. How wild would that be? Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. At BetMGM, we know how to put on a show. So we don't just do offers. We do golden offers like this. MGM Millions, our supersized jackpot where right now you could win over 21 million pounds. Get ready for the golden era in online casino. BetMGM, it's showtime. Minimum 10p game stake. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Hi and welcome to another edition of the Away End. I'm Craig Courtney and I'm joined by uh, Exeter City fan Sam Parks today to go through the game uh, ahead of Tuesday's rescheduled game against Exeter. So uh, Sam, first of all, thank you very much for joining us on the Away End. No, no worries, mate. Thank you very much for having me on and you know, looking forward to the game and looking forward to chatting about it as well. Brilliant. So we go into the game on Tuesday uh, evening, both off the back of defeats at the weekend. A worst performance I've seen for a very long time for Birmingham and a 3-2 defeat at Stockport. Um, wasn't pleasant watching at all. And yourselves, a 3-0 defeat at Wrexham. So um, it's going to be uh, one of those games where I think we're going to have two sets of wounded teams that uh, are going to look to uh, recompense for, for the weekend's results. So... Um, we actually haven't played each other in the league for quite a while. In fact, uh, we haven't played in the league since the 91-92 season. Uh, during that, we uh, both games ended up with uh, three points apiece. Um, so those were good. However, over the years, uh, we have actually played each other a total of nine, uh, no, 11 times. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So of those 11 times, Birmingham have won six of them, lost two and uh, three have been draws against your good selves. So, um, and the last game actually was the League Cup in 1999. So really is a fair while since we have uh, been up against each other. Um, So we've seen the record of Exeter. It's really good as far as the defence was concerned up until the weekend. I think, in fact, you were the uh, strongest defence in the league. So tell us a little bit about what to expect from the game on Tuesday. How does the team generally get set up? Who are your key players? And and if you have got any weaknesses, what are they? Um, yeah, you know, we're, apart from the weekend, you know, coming off the back of a 3-0, it doesn't really look too great for what I'm going to say, but we're normally quite strong defensively. Um, we normally play three centre-backs at the back, the two wing-backs. Um, normally a really resolute lineup. up um, We've got some strong centre-backs, you know, Tristan Kramer we've got on loan from Brentford. He's you know, probably the crown in that defensive jaw at the moment. Really strong, um, quick defender. So we're normally quite resolute at the back. Um, but, you know, Gary Kulba likes us to play out with the ball as well. Um, we like to keep the ball on the ground. Not a lot of hoof ball, um, unlike other, you know, lower league one sides. Um, you know, the boys aren't afraid of getting the ball down and playing quickly um, through the midfielders. Ryan Woods uh, is kind of key to that. Um, you know, ex-Birmingham man himself. Of course, of course. Looking forward to because I think Ryan, when he was at Birmingham, had, he, he didn't have the best of times. He, he came from a, a Middlesbrough side that, you know, when he came to Birmingham, he thought he was going to get the games and, and mm. play more than he actually did. And unfortunately, what with our managerial merry-go-round that was going on at the time, he 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 got in the team to start off with and then just like completely lost his way and didn't play many games before being moved on. So um, I think he's probably got a point to prove. Yeah, he's been he's been top for us, you know. Um, we had him on loan for half of last season from Hull. He really settled down here, which was really good to see for him and for us. And then came on a permanent in the summer on a free. So he's kind of key to it. He was out at the weekend, suspended, but he should be back in for this game. He's a key midfielder for us. Um, and then you know, we're kind of struggling for goals at the moment. Um, I think we scored one in the last five which mm-hmm. isn't, you know, the most clinical thing. But Josh McGuinness is a big one for us um, up front, holding the ball up, 
Um, we missed him during the international break, obviously, because he was away with Northern Ireland. But he's big for us, you know, playing off him. And then we normally play with two attacking midfielders behind that striker, playing off Josh McGuinness. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of trying to get the ball to feet, hold it up and play off him for extra. And hopefully it'll be a, a good watch against a Birmingham team that obviously wants to play football as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, going into the game, it's going to be an interesting one because defensively we were shocking at the weekend. We cannot see another performance like that. And, and Chris Davis's interview after the game highlighted the fact that that wasn't what he expected of his team. So I, I think we're, we're hopeful of seeing a bit of a bounce back from that. And, and that actually, when it comes to Chris and the team, that they can show us what they can actually do. You know, we, we're on a bit of a run at the moment of not, uh, not many points. We need to get back into it. And this is one of the games in hand that we have. So ultimately, to get uh, back into second spot, we need to to win that game. Um, but it's going to be far from easy in a walk in the park. You know, um, like we said, the toughest defence in the league. Coming into that against a, a team that have dried up from a goals perspective makes it interesting. And let's hope we don't get a dull and boring nil-nil. Um but you've mentioned a few of the key players there, Ryan Woods being one of them. But tell us a bit more around, you know, where where's the the weaknesses in your team? Would you say at this 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 present moment and and areas that if you could strengthen today, what what would it be and why? I think you know the obvious one at the moment is we we'd love a, an out and out goal scorer. You know, we'd we'd love for someone like Stano, who obviously I'm I'm sure we'll move on and talk about in a little bit, but. Yeah. We'd love a, an out-and-out out goal scorer that can, you know, grab us 20 goals a season and and can pull us out of these moments. Because at the moment, we're kind of lacking in that, you know, that fast, young attacker up front who's going to bag us some goals. So I'd love to see that improve. Um, and then obviously building on our weaknesses that came up on the weekend, we conceded three goals from from crosses, which is very, unconce- um, you know, uncharacteristically us you know two from corners and one from you know another long cross in so you know it's tightening up that aerial threat that that we seem to lack uh, at Wrexham you know we were not the worst team on the pitch and 3-0 kind of flattered us but we conceded some poor goals against Wrexham and couldn't create so I think it's being more clinical in in both boxes you know taking our chances at one end and then stopping the easy chances which we failed to do at the weekend. And something that Caldwell won't won't like, I suppose, is the other thing mm. of, of conceding from ultimately crosses and 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 dead ball situations. Um, so no, it's going to make it interesting. And you you mentioned Stano. I, I mean, how can we not go into this game and talk about the legacy of of him and his his dad uh, uh, at the club? Um, I think it's actually going to be in a way quite tough for him on. Uh, on Tuesday evening and, and when he comes up against you because he has such obviously fond memories. Uh, he's mm. sailed ultimately as well in the in the summer, I think brought in a fair chunk for yourselves. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of love uh, and, and I'll, I'll never forget the, the T-shirt moment when he played for Birmingham on loan and scored against Plymouth. I mean, it was it was just superb the, the way he did it and, and you know, he was, didn't, didn't hold back when it came against them. So, Always, always great from that front. But obviously, he was a young, very young uh, at the club. I mean, do you remember much of of him playing? And and what did, what did you see in terms of him? And did you did you ever think that he would become a ultimately fifteen million pound player? Yeah, obviously, we we sold him to Fulham when he was like fifteen, sixteen. So he never touched the first team there. But then we got him back on loan our first season in League One two seasons ago. And he was, you know, he was dynamite. He scored a hat-trick on his last performance um, in front of, you know, the stand that's named after his dad. So, yeah, ultimately, he we always thought he was going to become something special. You know, he always just looked a really good player. You know, quite a lot of us have tipped us, tipped him for England in the future. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's a wonderful player on the pitch and a, a great professional off it as well. You know, he's a top guy. Um, him and his family are, you know, utter legends at our club to be honest you know his dad and him um they're really part of the family down at exeter we still get stano down occasionally um when he's not playing which is you know amazing to see and you know he's always just going to be one of one of us i think and it's amazing to see someone from our home club you know 
going for that money and, you know, bagging lots of goals and hopefully his rise will just continue in the future. I mean, I've got to say, I'm hoping he bags a couple on Tuesday night. But then there's also part of me that thinks a player, it's always tough for a player mm. to go back to an ex-club, especially if they score. But I think this is extra. This is just extra because of the whole family story um, that, that goes alongside it. So I, I can imagine that actually it's mixed emotions for him um, on, on Tuesday evening. And, you know, it'll be exactly the same when you play at St. Andrews at Knighthead Park. It'll be exactly the same when we're there in the cup. Uh, mm. The TalkSport Fan Network is proud to be partnering with Lotto from the National Lottery. What would you do if you won a million pounds this Wednesday? I mean, would you roll up to the game this weekend in a brand new ride, picking up your mates like some VIP chauffeur, or better yet, scrap the car altogether and book out the entire first-class train carriage for you and all your mates? I'm talking champagne flowing, your own private waiter, the whole squad living it up on the way to the match. Now that's an entrance. You never know, you may be the next millionaire. Lotto's all about those once-in-a-lifetime moments. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. Yo, UK! At BetMGM, we give our players sports betting entertainment like nobody's business. Football, horse racing, darts, boxing, tennis, golf, NFL, NBA. You name it, we got it. Offers? You know it! Bet 10 pounds and get 40 pounds in free bets. BetMGM, it's showtime! New customers only. Exclusions apply. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. So, you know, it's it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But um, we've got obviously got another sellout attendance as far as the away fans are concerned, albeit the smallest I have known from away allocation from a Birmingham perspective for a very, 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 very long time. Uh, but rest assured, they're going to make some noise and, and they're still travelling down uh, in, in the full numbers. So it's going to be good from that front. So... We've mentioned Stano and we've mentioned Ryan. Um, but a section I like to do on the away end is to, to also test your knowledge regarding other players that have represented both clubs. Now, they can be in the form of permanent sales. It can be loan transfers. It could be that they have actually not transferred between the two clubs, but have represented both clubs. And I'm wondering, can you name five and I'm afraid to say I can't give you Ryan and I can't give you Stano. Um, so I'm really testing your knowledge there. But can you name five others that have represented both clubs over the years? I'll go with Jonathan Grounds to start with. Um, he was uh, he was at us when he, we got promoted from League Two. Um, yeah, top man, Groundsy. Is now um, part of the coaching staff at St Andrews as well. So you will um, no doubt see him again on Tuesday. Yes, yeah, I thought so. And then I'll go Noel Blake as well. Indeed. Um, just before my time, but a uh, proper journeyman he is. Um, Absolute legend. Um, a, a friend of, of Tilt and Talk as well. You know, he has, uh, he's actually joined us on the show live to go through all of his, his history and all of the things he's been up against. And what a true gen. What an absolute true gen. Yeah, top, top. He finished his career at us, I want to say. Um and then Luke Harris, who's on loan at you guys now. Indeed. Um, we had it for half of last season. He's dynamite. He is a proper scrappy little player. Hasn't um, hit the ground at Birmingham yet. I know he was injured to start off with as well, but I don't think we've seen the true um, true side of him at the moment. Hoping that that comes out you know, across the next few games, but hasn't really, uh, hasn't really embedded well, shall we say. Yeah, we, we really, really liked him. Um, he was electric for that, you know, six months after January. I think he scored something like ten goals in in six games or something, something crazy. Um, really, really good player. Um, I know he's on the still on the books of Fulham. So, yeah. oh, who else? I have to think. Clinton Morrison's a good one. You know, that's a big name. Absolute um, legend at the club. Um, never ever forgetting for his goal scoring celebrations when we played our local rivals, whose name I will not mention. <laughs> and then, oh, I need one more, don't I? You do indeed. Kevin Miller, who's our goalkeeper coach now. Indeed. Um, 
So, yeah. No, no, it's, it's really nice to see a really good connection between the two clubs, you know. And there are some um, other great names that, that you haven't mentioned, actually. The, the, some of them, I think, will be prior to your days, um, but others stand out and resonate across all of Birmingham. So, uh, firstly, Darren Robottom, representing ooh. both clubs. Um, it was great when he was at, uh, at Birmingham. Uh, Art Grosic, the goalkeeper. Um, oh, yeah. to yourselves back in 2010 and 11 uh, as a as a free transfer. Um, you've mentioned Kevin Miller already, um, mm-hmm. but also around his time at both Birmingham and across yourselves, you had uh, goalkeeper Andy Gosney, 92-93 um, season, he transferred to yourselves. Um, right back, a legend at, uh, at Birmingham, and he came from yourselves again, 92-93 season, Scott Hiley. The great mm. player he was. Um, we had uh, a midfielder whose dad was also manager of Birmingham for a while in Mark Cooper. Yeah. Um, so uh, he was he was great. And then when we go back over the years, um, and I will say this is the first time I've ever been able to go back this far. <laughs> so um, we had 73-74 uh, season with Keith Boker, who came from Birmingham. Uh, your 69 season was Brian Sharples. But then the one that's really gone back over time is 1910, 19 and 11. We, uh, or you took a goalkeeper from Birmingham called Herbert Crossweight. So there's one wow. for you. There's one for the history books. Um, but some great players that have that have been there over the time. So as we've mentioned, we go into Tuesday night, both off the back of defeats, um, both off the back of unusual defeats as well, shall we say. It's fair for both mm. clubs. So as we go into Tuesday night, it's a rescheduled game. But tell us, what does your heart say and what does your head say the result will be? My heart says we sneak a 2-1 and Stano scores for you lot. Um, you know, he'll get a great reception no matter what, I'm sure. But, you know, I think my head says my head says you guys sneak a 1-0. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a tight game defensively. I think we'll shore up a lot more after what happened at the weekend. I think, you know, mistakes have been learned from. Um but yeah, I, I think it's going to be tighter than you know a lot of people think. But I could see you guys kind of just sneaking it a little bit with that, especially that attacking and midfield quality that you guys have. And I think you know I, I'm I'm going to echo what you've said to be honest, because we've got to see a bounce back from a Birmingham perspective, and we cannot see a defensive performance like we saw at the weekend again. Um, and I don't think you know Chris Davies will. He, 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 well, put it this way. If players turn out like that again, I don't think that you'll see them in our squad. So he, he is going to be really pushing them hard. I agree. It's going to be tight, you know. Uh, ultimately, before the weekend, you did have the best record in defence. So we, we're going to come into it. We need to score some goals. Uh, we need to stand resolute in defence and we need to see a better performance. So I think I, I, I agree with you, your thoughts of just a, a 1-0, to be honest. I mean, that's that's what my, my head says. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'd absolutely love to come down and score two or three goals and get back, you know, back into the running lot we did before. But I just don't see it happening. I think it's going to be a very tight game. Two teams that ultimately will not want to lose. Um, it's a game in hand, so Birmingham need that to get back up to second in the league. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stick with my one nil um, win. Uh, and I will say, I. I I, I do believe it will be Stano. I think it's just kind of, if there is such a thing as written in the stars, it's kind of that. And I'd like to think that it's going to be one that he's going to do, that's going to be, you know, a celebration for not just him, but for his family as well. Um, and it'll be, be be nice for him to get back into those, uh, into that ground. I mean, God, he'll be able to show everybody around, won't he? Yeah, no, I'm sure, you know, our, our fans will give him a, a brilliant, brilliant reception. You know, he's he's still very, very loved at our club and, you know, we treasure him and his family. So, yeah, I, I'm sure he'll he'll love being back, to be honest, and I'm sure he'll get a great reception from both sets of fans. Excellent. Well, Sam, thank you very much for the insight into Exeter and what we are to expect as Birmingham fans on Tuesday evening. We mentioned it again, travelling down the M5. It's going to be a long journey for the fans, but one that hopefully they're going to enjoy um, and then afterwards, uh, we can see ourselves climbing back up the league. But it's going to be tight. But thank you very much again for your time and joining us on your way end. It's really appreciated. And I'll sign off by saying I hope you have a great rest of the season. Um, apart from Tuesday night, also the f- couple of weeks later when we play you in the cup, 
and then when we play you at St Andrews. But bar that, have a great season. Thank you very much indeed. We'll do this again when it comes to the next game at St Andrews at Nighthead Park. And I'll just sign off by saying... The TalkSport Fan Network is proud to be partnering with Lotto from the National Lottery. Make this Wednesday one to remember. You've got to be in it to win it. Lotto is the original millionaire maker where you could become the next millionaire. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. Yo, UK! At BetMGM, we give our players sports betting entertainment like nobody's business. Football, horse racing, darts, boxing, tennis, golf, NFL, NBA. You name it, we got it. Offers, you know it. Bet 10 pounds and get 40 pounds in free bets. BetMGM, it's showtime. New customers only. Exclusions apply. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans.